So here we are on the left hand side of the lathe. And oh, by the way, I should just mention um, there's two very, very minor modifications here. There used to be a powered suds pump. I don't like that. I just spray a bottle of uh, coolant if I need it. So so that that was removed. That's uh, that's just been blanked over. And I think there was a contact uh, like a rotary thing there, which also locked the door. So got rid of that as well, because that was part of the original three phase setup. Um, so I added a new knob there. And uh, looking inside here, this is the VFD. It's a WEG VFD. Uh, it's a little bit inconvenient, the depth of the VFD. So I've had to man it, mount it sideways. Um, if you notice here, there is a very short length of DIN rail uh, and, a, and a metal bracket there. So I actually I find that having it mounted sideways is no problem at all. Um, very, very rarely, if ever, need to actually view what's on that screen. You can. Let me just re-enable it. And so you can see what's on there. Uh, but um, I really don't need it. And in any case, I actually have a remote control module. When I say remote control, it's via a USB cable, but I can actually access all the functions, all the programming and everything on this VFD from a laptop if I would need to, which, frankly, I don't. Let's just turn that power off. By the way, um, the clicking was a contactor. or The initial click was me hitting the um, what looks like an e-stop. Uh, and then there's a, a secondary click of the contactor. The VFD looks like it's still powered up because uh, of, I presume, it's got some fairly large capacitors on the DC bus. And there it is, eventually fades. Now, um, down at the bottom, we've got the contactor. I think that contactor is made for uh, three phase, so it can switch up to three phases. I've only got uh, live and neutral, uh, which I've labelled up as L1 and L2. Um, then down at the bottom there'll be T1 and T2, so they go around to the top of the v top of the VFD there. Um, now, hopefully, it goes without saying that the contactor um, doesn't interrupt the protective earth. The protective earth is wired in directly. Um, then this is the power, which just comes from a standard 13 amp plug. I've never blown the fuse; it's got a 13 amp fuse in it. And so that power comes in on that white cable. Um, I split that power because I've got a 24 volt power supply and a 13 amp fuse is not suitable protection for the wiring to this 24 volt supply. So I go through a smaller MCB there. So that powers the, um, the 24 volt supply. And the 24 volt supply is used for the uh, enabling the coil on the contactor and uh, also the work light uh, up on the top. Um, prolific use of Wago blocks, I realise that. Probably not quite as neat as it could be, but it is it's really not bad. Um, and as I say, if I twist this, so that pops out, the light's on, it's telling me it's active. So now, it's enabled the power to the VFD. And also, so we got the, what I would describe as the uh, primary contacts for the contactor in there. And then we've got these auxiliary contacts and the auxiliary contacts are the things which I use uh, to turn that indicator lamp on. Okay, I think that's about it for this video. I will most likely post another video showing the circuit diagram and a simulation that I've got on my software showing exactly how this works. Thanks for watching.